Okay, for this little clip, we're going to look at the benefits of using Google Scholar search engine. Google Scholar is simply another search engine related to the, the Google company, obviously. To find it, if you go into the Google bar and just search Google Scholar, you will come up with this. When you go into Google Scholar, exactly like the usual Google search engine, you'll just see that it's listed as Scholar. It also um, has options to choose articles and or case law. Google Scholar is set up specifically for academics. So the types of um, things that it returns in its searches are academic papers, which is really good for research. So if you were looking for information on your topic, um, I'm going to look at for genetically modified foods um, and come up with a list of results like this one. A couple of things that you'll notice, um, instead of coming up with 30 million results, I've got 32,000 this time, which is still more than I could possibly look through. So there's a few things that I can do to narrow it down further. But you'll also notice that all of the um, returns are academic papers. So they have been written by academics. You'll notice that some of these people who have written them are underlined and they are live links. You can go to the link and check out who it is that actually has actually written the paper. So for example, this one was written by a um, person who works at the University of Western Australia. He works in agricultural and resource economics. Um, there's a list of all of the other titles of papers and things that he has written. Um, the years that he has written them gives you an indication of how prolific prolific he has been in his writing. Um, citations is how many times he has been cited by other authors, which means that if you're writing a research paper and you reference his work, he has been cited in what they can find in Google Scholar articles 4,300 times. That probably tells you that this guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to his area of expertise, agriculture and resource economics. And if you have a look at a couple of the types of things that he's written here, we've got um, organics, we've got um, genetically modified organisms, we've got GM foods. So it's pretty probably safe to say that he's going to be an expert in this field. So that's one of the advantages of Google Scholar is that you are able to do some research into the authors and check. Um, the other thing over this side here, you'll notice that the article itself is listed as a PDF. Now, sometimes if you click that, you will get a link to the whole article, which is fantastic. But quite often what you'll find is that it comes up like this one has. It's what's called an abstract. So this tells you a little bit about what the um, paper that he wrote is about. Uh, it tells you who the rest of the authors were. It tells you when it was published. It tells you where it was published. It will give you a link here, but it won't actually link to the article itself. It will link to a site where you'd actually have to pay to get the article. Sometimes you can be a little bit fluky if you um, go to the article's name and you copy it and you paste it just in straight to Google, particularly if you use the, um, what are they, quotation marks, to say that you're searching for this exact phrasing, you might then be able to find one of these links here. For example, there it is as a PDF. You might be able to find the article that way and get it for free. Um, some of the other things about Google Scholar, if you have a look at this article here, this was written in 2001. Now for a issue that's kind of timely like genetic modification in foods, you might be looking for things that are more current. So what you can do then is click on one of these over the side, which will then only return results from, for example, 2013. So if I did that quickly, then you know it's halved the amount of results that have been returned. Um, and all of these are now 2013 or um, later as far as the um, search results go. So that's another little advantage to Google Scholar. Um, down the bottom of the article, um, whatever you want to call it, little blurb that you've got here, you'll see this where it says cited by 353. Now that means that this article by these authors has been cited in another 353 pieces of work. 
So other researchers have cited some of the information or some of the research within this particular article in their work. Again, that helps to tell me that the information contained in here is probably going to be very valid. It's going to be pretty reliable and pretty credible because other people who work in the field are citing their information. Related articles, if you click on that one, as a way of expanding your search. Um, it comes up with a range of articles that are on similar type topics that are related to the first article that, that you found. So that's another way of expanding your search. 13 versions just means that um, Google is able to find 13 different places that this is on the net. As I said, some of them might be just the abstract, some of them might be the actual article itself, some of them might be a condensed version, etc. But it might be worth checking to see if you can find one that you can um, find the whole article for. Um, I did notice, yep, there's one there that's been translated into a different language. So that's sort of why you have different versions available. The site button, if you click on that one, very handy for research again. Um, it does an automatic citation for you. Now we do Harvard in-text referencing. So if you were going to use this particular article and you wanted to talk about it and you needed your reference for your reference page, all you've got to do is click on that copy it, paste it into your reference list and you have your Harvard reference done. It's not your in-text reference, but it is your end of text Harvard reference. Okay. Now you'll also notice that there are different variations to referencing because virtually every university has its own preferred way of referencing. Harvard is probably the most widely used variation though. Okay. Um, I think that's really about all I want to show you in Google Scholar. Um, yep, okay, again, so if you wanted to have a look for um, other related topics, have a think about using some of the suggestions from Google. Um, it can help you to expand your search areas that might come up with something different. If you are looking for um, other similar types of articles, use the related articles, use the cited by and see how you can expand your search from there. Okay, but Google Scholar, if you have an academic type of subject, is a fantastic resource that you can use to get academic quality pieces of information. That's it. Good luck.